Hello everyone, this is Quintilian and welcome to a new video tutorial. You, you've seen the new update, Nomad's Cult 1.50, and I thought it is worth looking into these features and try to explain it in a little bit of details so you know how to use them in your workflow moving forward. This new update is amazing and I'm really excited to show you the features and try to put them into a small scene. This is a little bit different from previous uh, video tutorials because this would focus on the new features and there is not one complete scene but rather highlighting this feature within a scene that I will create. So let's start with Nomad Sculpt. So before we get into using this feature, what I would like to do is to highlight these features. So the first one and the most important for me is the material. So next to your topology, there is a, the material sphere. And in here you have now five options. You used to have this somewhere down in the shading menu, but now it has its own material sphere menu. And that's uh, opaque, blending, additive, refraction, and tethering. And of course, you have other options associated with these. So this is number one. Number two would be, if you go to your light, now you have a new type of light. While this is not clearly shown once you've added a new light, but if you click on the percentage of the light, and again on the square, which represent the color of the light, it would open the properties. We used to have directional and spot. Now we have point. Now there's a catch about using point, which I really, really love, but also you need to understand that point does not cast shadow on other objects. So keep this in mind. Now the third feature is available for you under post-processing and if you scroll all the way down into color grading this is new so you could simply turn it on and it would work exactly like any post photo processing app or software where you have this curve and you could work your contrast your highlight and even it allow you to work on the different color channel such as red green, blue. So let's put the blue up and uh, you can see what's happening in this scene. Now the fourth feature, which is the last one I will be talking about, is the possibility of somehow arranging your tools. So if I click on Gizmo here, which is a tool I often use, you can see if I keep that click, I can move this icon and now I could order the tools I use the most and according to my preference, customize this tray so it becomes easy for me to grab the tool. Honestly, I am enjoying this feature. However, I am not a big fan of uh, customizing tools because giving me more options would really complicate me. Now, let's start with this scene after I've explained the fourth features, or the, the, let's recap. The first one is the material. The second one is the point light. The third one is the color grading and the fourth customizing your tools. Now, as usual, I've started with a new scene. While this sphere is really helpful, I always manage to remove it. I'll also delete the light that I have created and in here what I will start with is rather than testing these features and try to explain these materials on a sphere which would be ideal, I want at least to throw in a little bit of a, a tool that you probably have used or you're new to it which is the lathe tool and the lathe was introduced later uh, in the Nomad Sculpt cycle and it is brilliant. I remember when I was using any um, new 3D software, lathe was one way of how I could actually model a 3D object. So what is the lathe tool? The lathe tool allow you to have one axis 
and a curve and this curve is revolved around that axis to create a shape. So if you want to create a jar, for example, or a jug or a cup, what you need to do is to draw a profile and that profile would automatically be revolved or extruded in a, in a revolve axis, if that makes sense, to create your object. I like to use my lathe tool with the orthographic, so I am moving to the orthographic. And once I've clicked on lathe, nothing is happening. And that's simply because you need to specify what the curve that you want to use. Curve allow you to draw as you go. I would prefer to use path. And path is more like the pin tool if you're using Illustrator or you're using Photoshop before. And what I need to do is to start just putting point. And I have a point here. I have a point there. And let's uh, save this my project as usual i want this to be the 1.50 not q well q would be okay for now 1.50 update and i will continue adding point now what i want to create is this kind of uh, glass and this glass uh, would have a profile similar to what you see in here of course, this is still very rough. Remember that this is the axis of which the revolve would happen. There are some tools that you would benefit from. So for example, if you by mistake added a new point that you don't want, so similar to the point I've deliberately added in here, I click on that point and move it all the way. And when you have this red, it means that one of these points would be deleted. I want to refine my glass uh, and I would like this to be a little bit of curve. I want this to be straight. So by the way, clicking on the point again would change it from being uh, busier into being sharp. And the difference is I can show you at this point in here. So if clicking on it, you can see that there is a nice, clean, angular, um, angle that is created in here clicking again on, on it it would it would create uh, this a uh, nice smooth line and i'll take just a little bit of a time to try to adjust some of these points i don't want two to be here i just want one because uh, this is what i think my glass would look like also this is very sharp for me so just click on it and here we go so this point as you can see i'm just moving between the different type of point and try to create what i think would look like a glass that is acceptable as a glass of course you have the opportunity to create any shape you want any shape you desire and you could go back and always edit this line but for this tutorial what i will do is just stick to a simple glass shape and this would be it for me. So let's see what would happen to activate this tool. To activate this tool, just make sure you click on this dot and I have now my glass in place. You might ask me, Quintilian, why did you do this small profile? Well, if I did not create a profile that looks like a border of the glass, this glass would not look empty from inside and that's for me very important to show you some of the tool i'm really happy with this glass and if i check the wire you can see how clean the geometry is and that's also very good for the optimization click on validate and we are done now what i will do is i'll go to the top i'll click on gizmo and simply activate the clone and i would like to do some clones of my glass and the reason is i want to show you the different material and how you could operate with this material so click on clone drag click on clone again and drag and again i am in the gizmo tool i want to create six version of my glass and in here i have six in place I just want to remove this kind of symmetry, give it a little bit of a pattern. 
and we have the glasses in place. Now, the last thing I would like to do is to add a plane on the top and on the bottom. And the reason of adding this plane is to show you how shadow appear. So if you're creating the whole scene, a prop is very important, but sometimes how you position that prop is important as well. So to do so, what I need to do, to do is to add a new shape. Going to scene, in here I want to add a plane. This plane is a little bit small. I just want to pay your attention to the wire frame that I have in here. Going to the topology, I want to change the size of the plane. So rather than it being one, let's change this into something like six. And once click OK, that's even bigger than what I want. It's fine. I leave it. And I want to remove all of this division because I don't need any sculpting to happen. For me, this is just a reference. I just want to see how the light reacts with it. And the lower my density for a specific object, the more optimized my uh, scene would be and the more my iPad could handle. So once that is done, click on validate and I can go to front and go take all this down somewhere here. So it is adjacent uh, to the actual virtual floor that I have created. I could push it a little bit up. And if you, I feel these are a little bit too close to each other, so I'll give them a little bit of space to breathe by using the gizmo tool and moving them around as you can see in here. Now, so let's start jumping into this new material and I would talk about how this material work and what does this mean. So let's remove the wire. And one thing before actually jumping into the material, let's add a light and in here, I want to add a directional light. So you can see there's a directional light in here. Directional light, if I move it around, nothing is happening because it's a s somehow um, think of the light as one source outside the scene that is impacting the whole scene. I just want to change the angle. So I have these nice shadow that are not so long and not so short. Uh, so something like this would be fine. Now, let's forget about the light and jump into the material. So what are the material that are available for me? One thing I want you to keep in mind is that some of the properties of the materials here, the one that you see in here under the material, is impacted but by the material in the painting. So I'm pinning this and this, which is the painting menu and the material menu and try to apply the material for each one of them. For the first one, I would like to keep it as opaque so you can see how opaque is reacting to other material. For the second one, I would like you to change this into blending. And once I've done that, you can see nothing has happened. Yes, because blending is not applied. Opacity of the blending is one. However, if I start moving this uh, sliders in here, you can see that there is a little bit of blending happening and that blending is more of an opacity blending. So think about it as you are allowing the object to blend or to have this transparent impact with the background. Let me move to the third one, which is additive. Additive works similarly to blend, but it takes the value and add it to the scene rather than the value have only an opacity. So for example, if you're aware of using Photoshop, you have this add uh, blending mode and this works similar to it. So if I click on add in here, you can see what happens is suddenly this becomes very bright and it shows exactly as like there is a, a, a light source that looks like uh, glass. Now let's take the, th the fourth one in this case because the first I've left it, the second is blending, the uh, third is additive and I would like to add the new refraction tool and as you can see now this looks like a glass and this is 
the strength of using ref refraction. Now let's move into the third one. Oh, the third, this is actually the fifth one and change this into dithering. And again, dithering works similar to blending. Nothing is happening while dithering in, is activated without the slider being moved. However, if I start moving the slider, you can see a blending is happening, but also this is a kind of noise that is introduced to the material. Honestly, dithering is my favorite. And the reason for that would come up in a few minutes if you follow me so far. And the third one, I would keep it as blending and I would change the material a little bit down. And the reason to do so is because I would like to ex explain to you some of the differences between them. So, let me recap. Opaque shows the object as it's supposed to, following the roughness the roughness and the metalness properties in your painting. Blending, follow the roughness and the metalness. However, it allows the material to have an opacity. Additive, it provides an additi additi additive quality for the material, making it appear lighter. And sometimes it could impose as a light source, which you could look into in here. Refraction, works exactly as you would expect refraction, which is giving uh, properties of allowing light to pass through your geometry and break and go out. And that's why you would have this kind of a distorted reflection happening in your object. Dethering works like blending, allowing you to have uh, an opacity, but also introduce this kind of a noise and I like it because for me it allowed the best out of the old tools. Now let's jump into refraction. So this is my refraction cup or glass. In refraction you have an index of refraction. In real life physical objects all of them has an index of refraction allowing light to go between them or reflect and you could change this from here. Let me, before doing so, jump into the display setting and crack my render resolution all the way up so it is a little bit better. In index of refraction, as you can see, if I put it a little bit low, it would react as a normal transparent, which you could find as a transparent plastic. However, when you start introducing an in index of refraction, you can see that it becomes more of an object. At one time, this becomes more like a crystal glass, where it is very dense, allowing to more objects to be refracted through the glass. If you use the refraction, you have two options, which is the surface glossiness and the interior roughness. What simply this does is that the surface glossiness override the roughness in here. So for example, if I have my roughness all the way up and click force paint all, you can see that the refraction does nothing. And because that is overridden by the roughness, by the way, the same would happen to material, uh, to metalness in the material. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So this, is now lost its refraction even though the refraction is in place. However, if I go back and jump my surface glossiness, that should work if I don't have metalness in place. And this is one thing I have discussed with the developer, Stefan, and metalness in here refers to the conductivity properties of the material. And if it is a little bit high and the roughness is high, the refraction is totally ignored. So if you apply refraction on a material that has high metalness and high roughness, it would not work the way you think it would. So let's crack the metalness down, keep the, ref the roughness up and force paint all. Now, you can see that because I have overridden the glossiness that I could still get some ref 
interaction happening. So you can see here what is happening in the refraction. Now, of course, the best way to use refraction is to put down all the roughness value, all the metalness down and force paint it and you got the best out of your refraction. Refraction, sorry. Now, let's get into casting shadows. All of, all of these are similar, always unlit. It would allow you to have a mask, a white mask of the existing material. And let me just try to change the color. And as you can see, it's simply an, a material that has no understanding of what's going on with regarding to lighting in the scene. Again, you could use this for a light source. You could use this to mask some of your objects. Um, but for now, let's leave it off. Casting shadow allow you to cast shadow on your object. And there is a catch in casting shadow that I want to show you with regard to other materials. So I have here the refraction. I have here the blending. I want to put the blending then the blending down and I want to go to the dithering and put it all the way down as well. Now, what I would like you to notice looking into these, let me unpin this and unpin this, is that the shadow of the dithering and the blending is impacted by the light source. So you can see this is way sharper than this. So this is something to keep in mind when it comes to you actually trying to decide what material you want to use for your sculpts or your objects. However, in the refraction, you can see that it is solid. So it's a solid shadow. You cannot change that shadow as you would have done if you put the opacity of the blending or the dithering down. It might not be very clear for you, but it is clear somehow that this is way darker than what's happening in here. And that's why, for example, I would prefer using dithering to show some of my glass, but somehow, sometimes you might want to use refraction as a way to do it. So let's get to refraction. There is two-sided, and two-sided is not always obvious in all objects. Two-sided allow you to reflect that the surface and the backside of the surface both allow a refracting, refracting of a light. And that's why if I turn it off, you can see that there is no clear transparency because one side is refracting, the other is not. So those glass, the one that I've created, have two sides and one of them is refracting and the other one is stopping. And that's why you end up with something like this. Now what I want to do is I want to bring the two-sided up again and smooth shading is in interesting because always whenever if you watch my video I always go here and try to put the smooth shading up and the smooth shading allow you to have a clear shading again it is available in some software like Blender but also you can turn it off and you end up with this kind of jagged. Well in here you can turn it off so you're overriding the same setting that's available for you from the display setting in here. This would be for the refraction. So I've discussed the surface closeness. I've discussed the index of refraction. The last thing I would like to discuss is the interior roughness. So sometimes you would like to have this kind of a noisy glass or uh, not see-through glass. And if you crack up the interior roughness, that would provide it for you, which I think is really, really cool and allow you to have certain uh, settings that you wouldn't do before. Now, you might ask me, Quantilian, but we used to do this kind of a feeling of material using blending. Yes, this is still applicable. So if I go to blending and if I go all the way down from my painting and try to give it all the metalness I could have and remove all the roughness, and force paint it, you can see also I have created what it feels like um, a glass. Now, the refraction, which if you want to think of it 
as physical term is not happening but the illusion that a glass is there is happening and of course if you put the opacity a little bit higher it looks like um, a steel a glass that is transparent by the way if i put all the opacity all the way up it is pure steel so what i like to do sometimes is put the bitterness a little bit down and then bring back the opacity and that would give it this kind of a clear glass of course the color would be impacted and one thing i haven't mentioned is that the color of the refraction is impacted by the color of the material in here so if i change this into red this would give it a little bit of a refraction that is red now for the Deathering, which is my favorite, and you will know in a moment why it is my favorite. You could simply do the same as the blending to give the impact of a glass. So I will have the metalness all the way up. I will force paint all, and I could change the opacity somewhere in here. And this would give you also this feeling of glass. Again, if it's too much, then just bring the metalness down, force paint it, and you would have your glass. And finally, this is your blending. And my blending in here is not changing the metalness of the material, not changing anything in the roughness. And the reason I have put these all together next to each other, so you can see the differences between them while you're looking. Now, getting to why, for example, my dithering, or the dithering is my favorite. I've talked about the different material. So opaque is just allowing you to have a solid blending opacity, dithering opacity with the noise, allowing light to pass in. Uh, additive is just addition of that material into your scene. Refractive, you know, or what it is now. What I would like to discuss is how these react with other uh, properties especially in the post processing to do so i want to go to my light and i want to change the light intensity to be a little bit more so you could actually have a clearer understanding i want to go to my post processing and i want to turn it on and in here i want to put the quality up the full resolution up and there is a little bit of a change of what's going on in here now if you go to SSR Reflection, I want you to see what is happening. So if you are not noticing, the SSR Refraction is only, as we see now, impacting the dithering. If I go to my cup in here, so this is my cup, let me choose the gizmo tool. And I want to put the metalness a little bit down and allow this uh, refraction to happen. Sorry, the roughness to take place. If I go to also my perspective, that could provide a little bit of a clearer understanding. If I go to the reflection, you can see that the reflection SSR is not changing much in all objects except for this glass and if i bring these closer to each other you might start seeing what is happening clearly um, and that's for me the most important bit so if you have objects facing each other and the reflect the friction ssr is in place you can see that the impact is clearly or more clear on the dithering material and if i put it a little bit up you could see that it is the only one that is changing it might not be very clear for you but i want to explain it a little bit cle uh, clearer if i click here see the impact of this object in here if i click on reflection you can see that it's now becoming more lit however that is not happening anywhere except on the opaque. So the opaque here, it seems like a pot, like a clay pot. But if I click on the uh, reflection, you can see that now I can see a little bit of shadow. There is a little bit of reflection SSR happening in the refraction, but it is not as strong as you can see it in the dithering. What does this mean? 
This means that the reflection SSR works perfectly on the opaque. It works perfectly on the dithering, which is a type of a blending with introduced noise, but it does not impact all of the other material as you would expect it to. So for example, if your reflection is very important in your scene, let me take another angle here, and you would like the this to be on, you can see that the impact of it is happening in here, you see, and it is happening in here, but nothing much is happening on this side. Also, the dithering allow the light or the shadow to be a little bit um, transparent according to the blending of the material. Now, the last which I would like to talk about is the point. So let me add a new light here. And this light, I would like to change it into point. Now, it comes with a huge dense the density or intensity so let me change this to be something like um, 10 for now and if you're happy with that just click OK and you can see that there is a light in there and that light can be moved around if I click on it and it introduce this kind of one point impacting the other object again just to repeat what I've mentioned. I use the point light if I want a light to be on the object and does not cast shadow. And this would be really, really interesting when it comes to characters or positioning props. So I just want to put the light a little bit lower. So this could be five, for example. And now you can see with the light and without it, what would be the impact with the light and without it. So you can see how it works. Also, because uh, reflection SSR is on, you can see that you would have this kind of points where the light is. And you can see, by the way, here, the impact of the reflection SSR inside the glass, as you would have imagined. I would suggest you try to do an exercise similar to what I have done with this material. Just keep in mind that this refraction is impacted by what, why you what you have in here. So if, it must, if it's not working correctly, that's simply because you might have these not right. The last thing is to how these react to depth of field. So. If I turn on depth of field, if I click on the opaque, you can see that the opaque understand the depth of field. If I click on the blending, nothing much is happening. If I click on that glass, which is also blending, nothing is happening. If I click on the additive, nothing is happening. If I click on the refraction, nothing is happening. However, if I click on the dithering, you can see that the depth of field is there. So let me just try to show this again. Depth of field on dithering is okay. On opaque is okay. On blending, no. On um, blending, no. On additive, no. And on refraction, no. So depth of field works best when you have dithering, or when you have opaque. So this is why I like the dithering, but that shouldn't stop you from trying all of the other material available for you. Let me put back the blur. Let me choose the first glass in here, which is this one. So the gizmo and choosing this glass. And I would like the to arrange these in a way that looks a little bit representable for you once you're done with this exercise. So depth of field is off, depth of field is on. Let me put back the far blur and the near blur. Let me add a little bit of a bloom. I don't want the radius to be that much of a high. Um, and you could probably work a little bit on the threshold if you would like to. And finally, 
the last new feature with it which is color grading so for example i can go back to the last color grading option i have ga i gave and these are my glasses and these glasses they both they all react to light differently representing themselves in a different way according to the type of the material that i have selected so this would be the tutorial for this week i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've learned something or two if you have any comment any suggestion please leave them in the uh, comment box below uh, consider subscribing to this channel i love reading your comments i love hearing from you and see you in another video tutorial let me leave this with a turn table just for to end this exercise thank you so much for watching and i'll see you later bye bye now